You're about to learn the most common mistakes in the Rui Lopez opening, which is the most common chess opening of all, which arises after both sides move their e pawn forward and then you continue with bishop to b5. It's played by everyone from beginners to grandmasters, and of course, today we'll have some common eager nation tricks to win fast. So, without further ado, let's rock and roll. One of the main moves for black to play here is a standard move knight to f6. After that, you can castle, baiting black to capture this undefended pawn on e4. And if black does so, you then continue with rook to e1, putting pressure along the e-file to all these pieces that are standing there. And although black can get away with perfect play, there are some pitfalls that black should be aware of. For example, the move which seems to be the strongest and most natural for black to play in order to defend this knight on e4 is the move pawn to d5. It defends the, the knight, it also opens up the bishop, it grabs the center, what more can you ask for from just a single move? And yet the d5 move is actually a losing error if you know how to handle it properly. Now, here's how you do that. You first play d3, kicking off this knight from the central position, and after it goes back to any square, you then capture this pawn on e5. And now it turns out that black is defenseless. So first off, you've got this rook here on e1, standing in an ambush, ready to develop all kinds of discover checks as your knight is ready to jump away. But on top of that, we also have this bishop on b5, which is pinning the knight on c6, and together with our knight from e5, we're attacking it twice. And black just can't save themselves from these both threats. For example, if they capture your bishop, which is undefended, you then play knight to c6, and it's a pretty cool winning combo, it's a discover check to their king, and on the next move you're gonna grab their queen. Alright, if we know that the move pawn to d5 is losing for black, how about just safely moving the knight back to f6 from danger? In this case, you certainly want to take this pawn on e5, once again making use of your rook that is standing there and supporting this. And after black recaptures, here's the key point, instead of recapturing with a rook, you play another move which takes black by surprise and actually shows black that their last move, although supernatural, turns out to be another losing error. Because instead of taking it immediately, you then play pawn to d4. Now, here's the catch. The knight cannot go away because it's been down to the king. And our point is to take the, this knight on e5, not with a rook, but with this pawn. Because if you do that, you will then hit the other knight on f6, and it just runs out of squares. There are no good squares for this knight to go to, which pushes it all the way back to his starting position, and black is just completely lost there. For example, if black plays whatever, let's say they play c6, trying to counterattack your bishop, you don't care, just take your own e5. And as you can see, black's position is completely cramped and undeveloped. It's so easy for you to attack it if black just moves the knight away. But if they try to take the bishop, then you also recapture the knight, and it turns out that it wasn't just a simple exchange. Because your little rook on e1 actually turns out to be a devastating power. It's a discovered check, and once again black is lost. The only way to cover the king would be to play bishop e7, but then you can just capture it either with a rook or pawn, doesn't matter, you attack the king, and now you're a piece up and you can win easily. There are different ways of course to do that. For example, you can go queen to d6, once again setting it up for the discover check on the next move, and if the king tries to run away, you finish it off with another beautiful move, bishop h6. You just harass black all around and there is no escape for black anymore. You attack this square too much, and after black plays whatever, you then play queen g3, and you swing over to the king side, and you finish it off in style. As for the next trap, I was really surprised to see that the guy who was trapped by this is Jan Nipomnici, who played two World Championship matches against Carlsen and Dingley Ran. Although he lost both, anyway, he was one of the best players in the world, and it's crazy that he could fall into one of the basic traps in the Rue Lopez opening, but it's simply going to show you that it is really effective and it does work. Alright, so it starts off with you playing pawn to a6, and if white drops the bishop back, which is the main move, you then play pawn to d6, which is a normal development move, but at the same time, it's also a provocative move. You open up this diagonal, therefore your knight is pinned down to the king, which somewhat provokes white to try to take advantage of that by going pawn to d4. Looks very advantageous for white, as you've threatened to either capture the pawn or to go forward, again the knight is pinned, not like that, it's been like that. So in both cases, it looks like black is going to be in trouble. But here's what you do here. You first play b5 to break the pin. And as the bishop goes back, you then start trading off everything on d4. And it's best to start with a knight, because we really want to trade off everything, just because we've got something in mind. So you start with knight takes d4, and as white recaptures, we just keep trading. And for the moment, looks like white's position is just great. They're head in development, everything's cool, but it turns out to be wrong, because you then play pawn to c5, and thanks to this little trick, you actually win the game. Now, you gain a tempo by attacking this queen, and as it goes back anywhere, doesn't really matter, you want to push the pawn forward, which traps this bishop on b3. 
So that's the trap. It's actually a very ancient trap called the Noah's Ark trap. But for some reason, up to this day, it's still very effective. There's also one little thing that you gotta know about this. White may try to move the queen forward, creating these two threats, either to capture a pawn on f7 or to grab your rook on a8. But in this case, you can hit two birds with one bishop by playing bishop to e6. And in this case, you attack the queen, you also cover this diagonal, plus your queen defends the rook. Therefore, you solve both problems, and now white is defenseless. They can try to give this final check, then you drop the bishop back, queen can come back to d5, trying to renew this threat, but now you can safely play pawn to c4, and you win the bishop for nothing, and you've got a winning position. The next common error is also super hard to figure out. After black goes pawn a6, standard move, your bishop drops back, they go knight f6, new castle. So far, both sides just develop their pieces, and if they keep doing the same, just go on bishop c5, as they normally do it in the Italian game, you then shock the building by playing knight takes e5. What the heck, at first it seems like you just blundered the knight because the pawn was defended and black could simply take it. But then you play pawn to d4 and you're going to take your piece back with interest. In most cases your opponents are completely confused by this little sacrifice and they just play bad moves and they go down quickly. Just to give you a quick hint that pros in this position go down the rabbit hole of knight takes e4 and then surprisingly what doesn't take any of these pieces but goes something like rook e1 trying to make the position even crazier but of course no normal people would do that so let's take it back. Normal people take on d4 which is wrong and then you recapture with a queen and you actually get a winning position already as early as move 8 of the game. Now you control the center fully, you've got two powerful bishops which are ready to attack black which are pinning black's position all around if this knight goes away from e5, your opponent is ready to move forward and kick away this knight from f6, and you simply have this simple attack where you just go forward, keep attacking, and black has nothing to oppose. For example, if the knight goes back to c6, trying to counterattack, you can eliminate this knight, and after that you can attack however you like, e5, bishop g5, all natural moves that go forward actually put black in big trouble. For example, e5, kicking off this knight, if it moves somewhere, you can then continue your attack with queen g4, aiming at this pawn and also still renewing the threat of bishop coming here to g5, going after their queen, and black is pretty tough here. For instance, if they castle, there's a very common tactical pattern here, you can actually play bishop h6, regardless of this pawn, because it's been down to the king, and by doing so, you actually win the game. So you have to move forward and give up their rook, but after that, you still have a ton of attacking ideas, and normally, you should be winning this game. I know that many of you guys are generals people, you don't always win one games, but at least, if you wish, you should probably be able to. There is another classical error in the Rui Lopez opening, which actually occurs across many different openings as well, so I gotta show it to you. In this position, Black's main move is pawn to a6, forcing the bishop to make a decision whether it wants to go back or to trade. And in case they trade, Black typically re recaptures with a d-pawn, opening up this bishop diagonal. And if White then castles, Black can then play bishop g4, establishing this pin. Now what can White do about this? Normally White wants to get rid of this, so they play pawn to h3. And here comes the famous fishing pole trap, where black goes pawn to h5, baiting white to grab this bishop on g4. And if white actually does that, which is wrong, then after pawn to recaptures, your rook is now on steroids, and it just goes into the beast mode and supports your massive attack. Now, all you want to do is to bring your queen over to the same h-file and to checkmate white. On top of that, we're attacking this knight, and if it goes anywhere, does it really matter, your main plan is just to play queen h4. And now we have this battery of heavy pieces and we're ready to move our queen forward somewhere along the h-file and to deliver checkmate. And white is defenseless if they ever try to provide some escape path for their king, you can play pawn to g3, lock the door and now the king is defenseless, you're gonna checkmate white along the h-file. Now this trap is old but it's super effective and still lots of people fall for this trap across various different openings, not only in the Rue Lopez opening. By the way, going back a couple moves, I've got another video where I showed how Fisher encountered this bishop g4 pin in the Rue Lopez and how he destroyed black, so if you're curious to know the right way for white, I'll drop the link below in the description, you can check out that video later. The next trap is both evil and solid. In this position black can play knight of six, attacking this pawn on e4. Quite often white defends it by going pawn to d3, which is one of the most natural ways to do that, and then black plays a weird move knight to e7. At first looks like a completely wrong move which just violates all the opening rules, and on top of that, it seems to blunder this pawn on e5. 
But the trick is, if white actually captures this pawn, you then play pawn to c6, attacking the bishop, and if white moves the bishop anywhere, you then follow up with queen to a5 with a triple attack to the king and both minor pieces, which means that you're going to win one of white's minor pieces. Now, the trick is actually very natural and, you know, very natural for white to fall into, I should say, because the move, if I take it back a couple moves, this move knight to e7 looks so weird that your opponent naturally wants to punish you. And so many of them will actually grab this pawn e5, falling right into your trap. By the way, the beauty of this trap is that if they don't fall for the trap but play something else, doesn't really matter, you then can still make use of this maneuver. And you can play pawn c6, gaining a tempo attack in this bishop, and you then relocate your knight to g6, which is actually a very nice square for the knight. From here, you defend this pawn on e5, and in the future, you're ready to jump forward somewhere down the line in the middle game, and, and it's gonna support your attack. And your position is absolutely fine. You can then just play all the usual, you know, developing moves, and you're good to go. So even if your opponent doesn't fall for the trap, you still end up with a perfectly solid and good position. And the next trap is something I used a lot, and I trap masters and grandmasters that way. That's how effective it is. After bishop b5, the main variation for black goes like this. a6, bishop a4, knight f6, black develops. And then, since they seem to attack this pawn on e4, you can defend it by going queen e2. And it is a sideline, in most cases in the rule opus, white does not play this move, but it makes sense we defend this pawn. Very often at this point, black starts to worry about their own safety, because here you can possibly eliminate this knight and then snatch the pawn on e5. They understand that, and so they want to break the, not the pin, but just push the bishop back by going pawn to b5. And as you go back bishop b3, they now think, okay, now I'm safe, I'm going to continue my development. And they play bishop e7. After that, they hope that they're going to castle and have an easy life, but we know that we're not going to let it. We play pawn a4, and now we're challenging this pawn on b5, because we attack it with a pawn as well as with a queen. On top of that, we've got this Rook on a1 standing in an ambush, and if black ignores the threat, you know, they're gonna suffer because after this trade, it turns out that they cannot recapture. The pawn is pinned. So let's take it back. So what do they do about this pawn on b5? I mean, if they trade on a4, they just split up their pawns, and it's just not good for their pawn structure. You know, we still renew all these threats, and their pawns are weak. They don't want that either. So what can they do? Let's take it back. Finally, they come to the conclusion that they should just move the pawn forward. Now, they still hope to castle and, you know, sip their cocktail and enjoy life. But we're gonna challenge them once again with the move pawn d4. This time we strike in the center. And we want to eliminate this pawn from e5, because if it actually moves, we can then play e5 and it's very unpleasant. The knight doesn't have any good squares to go to and black's in trouble. So, after pawn d4, your opponent starts thinking hard, and after some calculation that figure out that pawn takes d4 might not be good because you push the pawn forward, so they instead play pawn d6, and they think that they're playing safe. But instead, you then win the game by queen c4. And this is a sudden double attack, this pawn on f7, as well as this knight on c6. But I can't defend them both, and therefore, they're going to lose. If you often encounter your opponents who are trying to pin your knight this way, then you may check out the video which I mentioned previously when I showed how Bobby Fischer completely destroyed somebody who tried this kind of pin against him. So I'll provide a link somewhere here and also down below in the description. And if you want to ele elevate your overall positional understanding so that you play both Rue Lopez or any other opening well, you can check out this free masterclass by clicking the link over there.